Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Yesha Gupta. I'm a board-certified radiologist, and up until now, most of my content has been geared towards being a radiologist. But ever since I became a mom two years ago, I have really realized the challenge that it is of being a working mom, especially in a male-dominated field like radiology. And I thought that I would start incorporating some of that content into my channel because it has really been very personal for me. Obviously, I've been navigating attending hood now for the last year over a year um, as a working mom and some of the challenges that we face are unique compared to just being a radiologist, right? So I thought in today's video I'd focus a little bit more on the working mom aspect of my life and tell you exactly what I've been doing to sort of get into this place where I feel like I have a good rhythm of balancing both work and life. The first thing that I have found has been the most helpful, this is the most important tip in this entire video, and that is that you have to find the right job that supports you, that supports your needs as a mom and as a human and also obviously as a radiologist. So for me personally, I was very transparent from the very beginning and I think that is really what sets you up for success and that's what set me up for success. I literally brought it up at my interview. I was like, you know what, I am the primary parent, I want to be the primary parent and I need to be the person in my house that has flexibility to be there if my kid is sick or if something comes up last minute or, you know, whatever it may be, I need to be the person who takes care of that at home. And I think that really set me up for success in my job because now I don't have any stress or anxiety about if something does come up. And like, luckily, knock on wood, right, nothing really has come up so far barring one or two like very random instances, but it's been very smooth and I know that if something does come up, I have the support of my colleagues to take care of whatever it needs to be. So I think transparency is number one. You have to tell your job that like, you know, this is what I need from you and you will find out right away whether it's a good fit for you or not. One example that I can tell you about is just the idea that sometimes my childcare ends at 4 p.m. And I told, you know, the people that I was interviewing with, I said, hey, you know, sometimes I know my schedule is till 5, but I have to pick up my kid at 4, and then I will make up the hour on the back end, like whether it's after my kid goes to sleep or if I need to log in early or whatever it is, I'll give you the same amount of hours of work, but I do need that Sometimes that 4 to 5 p.m. is a little bit precarious for us in our house. And at that time, I didn't have childcare during that hour. But luckily, they were totally open to it. They were like, let's just see how it goes, try it out, and you know, we, we will work with you and see if there's any issues. And so a few times, they did have to log out around 4 or 4.15, go and get my kid, etc., like pick, do pick up, do whatever duty I need to do. And I never heard anything. And I feel like that's because I was very transparent about my needs as a person, right? I was like, this is what I need. And similarly, like, and in return, you know, I was luckily able to find childcare during that time. So now it's really not as much of an issue at all. But during that time when I otherwise would have had a lot of stress about having to leave early or having to log off early, I don't have that stress anymore. And I think all of the tips in this video, including this one, are just about relieving that stress of being a parent from your workday because it's very hard to focus 100% on your job when you have these other things that are stressing you out. So the more we can reduce that stress, the better. And for me, just being transparent and being open about my needs was the most crucial thing that I could have done to set myself up. And you know what, if you do interview with a job and they are totally not open to that flexibility or they are like, no, that's not gonna work for us or people in the past have hired nannies and like done all these other things, why can't you do that? If you get responses like that, then you know right away that maybe this isn't a great job for you. It's just not the right fit. I'm sure it's a great job, but maybe it's just not a good fit for a working mom, right? Not all jobs are created equal. So that's just, it's honestly a good thing that you interviewed and you found out early on and not having to live through that stress. Uh, it, it could be a blessing in disguise. So I'm really thankful that I was transparent because I got to see exactly what the response would be and it was positive for me, but it may not be in every group. So that's just one thing to think about as you interview for jobs. And the next thing when it comes to a job is setting your boundaries. For me, I knew that evenings and weekends were just, it's not gonna happen for me. I don't want to be logged in on an evening. I don't wanna be logged in on a weekend. And I say logged in because as a radiologist, we log in and we read our studies, right? So for me, it's pretty easy. I don't have direct patient care every single day. I don't have to see patients. I don't have appointments. So for me, it's easy to just log off and you know be done. But that's not true in every medical specialty, obviously. Sometimes you do have to see patients. But the boundaries would be like blocking off your schedule, for example. So 
I knew from the very beginning that I would not be wanting to do evenings and I wouldn't be wanting to do weekends. I don't want to work holidays because again, for me, it's all about reducing stress and having to scramble for childcare is honestly stress inducing for me. I don't like the idea of having to scramble last minute to find any sort of childcare. And honestly, it still stresses me out when I find out, I get an email from our daycare saying, oh, we're gonna be closed on this day or a half day on this day because immediately I'm like, what am I gonna do, right? I mean, luckily I have options now and we'll get into that, but it's very stressful if you're a parent like you get it. It's stressful to find backup childcare or childcare and backup childcare and backup childcare. So for me, that was one of the boundaries that I said. I don't want holidays, I don't want weekends, and I don't want evenings. And yes, I mean, there is a trade-off there, right? I will not be a partner in my practice because I'm not going to be taking call in those hours. And that's a trade-off that was worth it for me because I would rather have the time with my kids. I can't get that time back. I can't get any of that back. And the stress is just not worth it. But obviously, if you have lots of childcare, you have the help at home, then maybe for you it makes sense to work those times. But for me, that was a hard boundary, and I knew that if that gets encroached upon, then that would be probably a deal breaker. Again, luckily, I was open and transparent about these things at my interview, and they were very understanding. And the nice thing about breast imaging is that there really are no true emergencies. It's usually outpatient during the day type of work, so I'm lucky that I have a specialty where I don't need to be available during after hours necessarily. However, not every specialty is like that and you'll just have to find a job that would work for you. Sometimes you also have to be creative. Like if you do need, financially you need the money to be working extra but you don't wanna work extra during those hours, you might have to be creative and find different solutions. Some people I know have different quote side hustles, right? Where they are doing surveys or they are doing other medical work, maybe they're doing legal review, other things during time when they otherwise would not be working rather than having like scheduled clinical time, for example. And I also have done some of these things because I actually went down from full-time to part-time, which is what I'm gonna talk about next. But to fill in that salary gap, I did start working for another group where I just read on my own time. And that way I can sort of make up some of that salary differential. Obviously, if I wanted to work 100% with my group, it would be a little bit more challenging because I probably would have to have more scheduled clinical time, and that would probably be during those hours when I don't really always want to work. So it's actually very helpful to think creatively about where you can make up that difference. If there's other types of work that would help, I mean, there's medical writing, there are so many different things that you can do during your off time. And a lot of times it's not definitely the same, like hour per hour percentage of money that you're gonna get for clinical work. However, if the option is to either give up that time or make no money at all, that could be a good way to at least sort of make up some of the salary differential. As you can see, or maybe already tell for me, the number one thing was having a supportive group that understood my needs and having some sort of flexibility during the day. Um, obviously, most of the days I'm just logged in eight to five and I have childcare and I have everything, but it's when those things start to break loose, right? When you start to have sick kids, if you your daycare or something is closed, when the childcare falls through, that's when these things start to really matter. Um, so for me, it's been really, really helpful to not have the stress of worrying about what I'm gonna do if something were to fall through the cracks there. As I alluded to earlier in this video, one of the major things that has helped me sort of keep my stress levels under control and balance everything that I need to do at home and my work is dropping to part-time. And I actually went from five days to three days, so that was like a big difference. I'm now 0.6 FTE, as they like to say. And so I work three days a week. I don't work evenings or weekends, as I mentioned, and I also don't work holidays. So for me, that's been really nice. I will say in my prior job, I also didn't work evenings, weekends, or holidays. So that part never changed. However, I did drop from five weekdays a week to now three. So that's been really nice because now I have two full weekdays to do things like this, where I get to make videos and do things that bring me joy. I try to do all of the house planning. So if there's anything that needs to be done, gift shopping. <laughs> I mean, if you have a toddler or a child, like you understand there's so many birthday parties, these things have to, you, they have to get done by somebody, right? You have to get birthday gifts, birthday cards, making sure that there's food on the table every day, that's my job, um, getting my son's stuff ready for school, getting my husband's stuff ready, and I enjoy doing that stuff, like I complain about it, I'm sure if you're somebody who knows me in real life, I will complain about it, but I actually don't mind doing it at all. I, it's fun for me, especially when I have the time. Here's the thing is I found so many things, like even laundry and stuff, was so mundane and I hated doing it because I felt like it was taking away from 
my work time or other time that I could be doing other things or I was just stressed about work and I'm like, oh, I should be working, I should be studying, I should be doing this, right? Especially when you're in training. All you're thinking about are your exams and studying and learning new things. But now that I'm done with that phase of life and I can actually compartmentalize my work and my home life, having those two days off really made me enjoy these like little things that you get to do. Like I actually enjoy going grocery shopping now because I don't see it as a waste of time. I don't see it as like, oh, it's so difficult. You know, I don't have the time for this. I don't see it like that anymore because I have created the space in my schedule to take care of these things. So sometimes it requires just you to reframe your attitude a little, but because I was able to drop from five days to three days, it has really changed my mindset a lot. And I actually enjoy doing this stuff now. So that was a big, big shift for me. And it has really given me a lot of mental space to just think about things, think about like what I want to accomplish and hopefully make better videos for you too. So that was something that really has improved my quality of life and work-life balance a lot. And like I said, I have found ways to make up the salary differential. So if the financial aspect is why you can't go to part-time and I get it, like it's, you know, it's a big chunk of change. It's not a small amount, especially when you're going all the way from 100% to 60%, that's, that's big. But there are ways that you can make it up and also like, I don't want to be like, well, you can also save money because that's true, but that's also challenging when you have a family to take care of. But um, yeah, I was able to find another way to make up that money by working for somebody else and I do that in the evening. And yes, I lose like an hour or two of TV time every evening. It's true. I do lose that time. And in fact, I just remembered like I have to go do that right now. I have to go do that other work if I want to make up that money, right? But it's all pluses and minuses to everything. And having the flexibility to do it on my own time is really what matters to me. It's not that I don't want to work. It's that I can't always work during the same time as everybody else, right? We call it a split shift. I'm sure you, you may have heard of that terminology. A split shift is when working parents sort of work during the time that they're they have childcare or their child is sleeping, so they might work during the day, but then log off at three while other people work until six and then log back on after their kid is sleeping and work late into the night. That's what a split shift is. And that's kind of what I do now, where I still work until five, but I will log in and work up, work a little bit extra to make up for the two days that I'm not working um, during the week. So that's just, you know, that's just something that works for me and has given me a lot of like, like I said, mental clarity and finding joy in the little things in life again, because I get to not be stressed all the time about work and having to also do everything else at home. So for me, that's been a game changer. I also did a major change from one job to the other where I was working originally hybrid, where I was 50% on site and 50% remote. And that was actually a big shift also from training, right? Where you're 100% on site because remote is not a thing in training. You don't get to do residency from home. You have to be on site, right? That wasn't even an option. Wasn't even a thought, I should say. But after the pandemic, thankfully, working from home has now become such a thing in radiology, especially, I mean, in every sector, but radiology for sure, that I was able to find a 50% on-site 50% from home job that I thought was going to be a great fit for me. And obviously I love that job. It had lots of pros, lots of things that I was looking for at the time. But after sort of living it and realizing that maybe I don't want to commute twice a week to like for two hours each way, I just realized it was burning me out. And so I shifted completely to a work from home job where I get to go in on my own terms. And obviously if needed and coverage is needed, I will also go in. But usually it's actually on my own terms, which is really nice because I can choose the days, I can make sure I have the childcare that I need, I can choose my hours even, and get the cases done that I wanna do. And it's been honestly so awesome because I feel like I'm still connected to the people on site in my group. I get to work with our awesome breast imaging team that we have when I'm there. And then when I'm working from home, I actually know who I'm talking to. Isn't that nice? Like knowing the people on the other side. So it's been really like just a huge blessing for me and just being home has, again, reduced so much stress because I get to, again, be available if my kid is sick. Again, knock on wood, has not really been a major issue recently. Not like when he was really small, just starting daycare for the first time, then he was sick all the time and it was such a stress. Um, but number two is like even little things, right? Like, oh, someone wants to deliver a package but it requires a signature and someone has to be home. Like if nobody is ever home, that is so tough. That is so tough. When do you get the plumber to come and fix like the bathroom that's been leaking forever? I mean, these are all these little things that obviously people have been juggling for decades, right? This is not a new thing. But instead of having to pile all of my chores onto one day that I'm home, 
like a lot of people do. I luckily have the flexibility to do that on pretty much any day as long as I get to still be available to work, which I pretty much always am. So that has been a major, major game changer for me. And I just love being able to manage everything at home, think about everything I need to do at home. I don't know, it's just like when I go to work, I'm in work mode. And yes, when I'm, when I'm in my office and I shut my door, we're in work mode. But just having the flexibility to be available if needed, and it's just, again, reduced my stress. I feel available. I feel like I'm doing a good job at work. And I still get to feel like I'm doing a pretty good job at home too. So for me, big deal to do that. It was not easy. It was not an easy decision. If you talk to the people around me, you'll know that I mulled over that decision for months and months. It was so difficult for me to decide. But now that I've done it, I'm so grateful that I did do it. And I never I never want to change my job ever again. I'm, I'm super happy in my job the way that it currently looks, the way that it currently is. And I hope that it continues on for a long time. This is obvious, but this is something that obviously will help you as a working mom or a working parent, and that's having adequate childcare. And I say adequate because that's the key word here, right? You need childcare. If you're, if you're a physician, especially if you are a physician, if you're a dual physician household, but if you're in any job that really requires you to not leave like randomly, right? Like you can't just, can't, I mean, you, I don't want to say you can't cancel your day of patients, but you really shouldn't. Patients get upset and it's very stressful to have to do something like that, right? Same with being on call. If you're on call, like you're the person that everyone is looking to to be on call that day, it's very hard and stressful to find coverage. I mean, maybe you have great colleagues who will do it for you, but most of us are wired in a way that we don't want to have to call in backup, right, if we don't need to. So having layers of childcare is the best thing that you can do for your mental health as a working parent. I That's how I feel about it. So right now we have like two, I would say like two to two and a half layers of childcare. We have like daycare, we have someone that comes and helps with childcare, and then we have family, which is like, unfortunate. well, fortunately and unfortunately, all of our parents still work, so it's a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing. I'm happy that everybody is still working, but it means that nobody's just available, you know, on a random Tuesday at two o'clock to pick up the kid, which is fine, but that means that we need a lot of childcare to make sure that, again, nothing slips through the cracks, that, oh, you know, your kid fell and got hurt, and now someone has to come get him, and now no... Nobody's available. That's like my worst nightmare. And actually, when I was on site, I feel like every time my child got sick, when I was working on site at my first job, it was it was always when I was working on site. I would get a phone call that was like, "Hey, just letting you know that like this happened and you know, can somebody come get him?" And I would I what am I going to do, right? I was 2 hours away. I couldn't do anything about it. I would call my husband. He also has a clinic. I mean, he's a physician. He's a surgeon. And if he's in clinic, then he has to cancel his patients to go and get our son and then bring him home. And without any additional childcare, it's not like he can go back. And also, if you ever tried to take a sick kid to a doctor's office, <laughs> which is where my husband works, he has a meltdown, full-on meltdown. So you can't even take him to work. Maybe when he's a little older, he will understand that this is not his doctor, it's just a doctor's office. But regardless, it was never gonna work because nobody wants to be in a doctor's office with a screaming toddler in the back, right? So it was like such a mess. And that happened more times than I would like to, you know, like it was traumatizing for everybody. It was difficult. I was so stressed out all the time. And if I saw that daycare phone number on my phone, I would just like, my heart would just drop. And it happened multiple times, like so many times. And there was even a couple of times when I missed the phone call because I was in an office where there were, there was like no signal. And so I would miss the call and then they would leave me a voicemail. Like, isn't that the worst thing when you're the parent and they can't even get a hold of you? I mean, of course they have other people's phone numbers. It wasn't like the end of the world, but just as a parent, you just feel like, really? And so being able to work from home, being available has been obviously a game changer in that. And of course, having multiple layers of childcare, because now if that happens at two o'clock, I have somebody that can go get him and I don't have to worry about it. You know, I don't need to think about it. It's just, I have people on speed dial now that I can turn to. And so having layers of childcare is so helpful. And another example, we just got a call or an email that said, Hey, this random day is professional development day. So please, you know, please make sure that you don't drop your kid at school because it's closed. And I, of course, I think it's a holiday 
for me, but it's not when it, it's not like Christmas or New Year's that I know we're gonna be closed. So I still have to like call and make sure make sure that I have childcare. But just having the people on speed dial is like the most important thing that you can do for yourself. So yeah, having layers and layers of childcare is like the best thing that I have found to be, I don't know, to help my work life balance because now I don't have to stress about it. And yes, and it wasn't easy. I mean, this is it's not easy to find good nannies. It's not easy to find good daycares. It's not easy to find even family help sometimes because everyone is busy and their priority is not your child the way that your priority is your child, right? So it's hard, but sometimes things just have a way of aligning and working out. And for us right now, like the current status of childcare is in a very good place. So it's, yes, that's been a major, major game changer for me. How many times can I say game changer in one video? <laughs> Probably a lot. <laughs> okay, finally, this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video, and that is just outsourcing as much as possible. Yes, I do have two days off every week, but I still outsource as much as I possibly can, as much as I possibly want to, because I have the help, and I don't know, I would rather spend my time doing the things that I wanna do, like cooking and making food and making sure everything is ready for my son and things like that, than cleaning the bathroom like that is just not something I enjoy so we have someone that comes and cleans our house every week and we have um, the backup child care that we have actually comes to our house and will help with housework too so it's very 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 nice I am super blessed and super lucky to be able to have so much help at home and that means that I can do stuff like make YouTube videos instead of worrying about you know like changing the sheets in every room for example so I am super lucky and again, something that has really helped with work-life balance because tomorrow morning when I wake up and I have to go to work, I don't have to be thinking about the huge number of to-do list items that are pending for the house, right? Like just every little thing adds up and creates this mental load for moms and for working parents that can really feel overwhelming. But outsourcing whatever you can can be really helpful. And obviously it depends on like what you enjoy. Like if you like doing laundry, then don't outsource your laundry, but maybe you can outsource your meal prep. Like I enjoy meal prep like meal planning and meal prep so I don't outsource that but if you don't like doing it then maybe you can consider doing like HelloFresh or sometimes even on Facebook I have seen like people that are willing to cook meals for you or even do like meal prep for you for pretty inexpensive honestly or even if you have like a friend and maybe you help them with something and they help you with something like that's an easy way to do stuff if you are gonna cook you can cook everything twice as much and freeze a batch I've seen that work for a lot of people but just outsourcing the things that you can. There's somebody online that I follow, Joyce the Dentist, who is also a working mom and also like a content creator. I mean, she's like a real content creator. She's not like my channel. That's very small. But um, she outsources her laundry. Like she sends it to a laundry service. That's an option. I mean, there are a lot of things that you can outsource. And I'm just now starting to like learn about everything. Even styling. Like you can hire someone to create like 10 outfits for you and you can just have those 10 outfits and like you're good, you know? If you're not someone who enjoys shopping or creating things, like if you've changed sizes recently, especially those of us that are having babies and change, your body is changing and whatnot, it can be stressful to even just go shopping. So there's you can like outsource everything and anything. And so I encourage you to actually do so because sometimes your hours are better spent doing other things, even just like self-care. Um, yeah. You just, Think about what makes for you, sense for you, for what you enjoy, and what financially makes sense for you to outsource. And if there is something specific you don't enjoy, like you can find someone to come and clean your house, even if it's once a month, for pretty inexpensive depending on where you live. It doesn't have to be like this $1,000 commitment. It's really not. So just look into it. And even just coming home to a clean house is like the best feeling ever. So I encourage you to outsource everything. This is the one thing that a lot of working moms that I have talked to, like they will just say the word outsource over and over and over. They're like, outsource everything. Like don't mow your lawn, hire a high schooler to do that. You know, like you can find ways to outsource everything in your house if you really wanted to. Just find the things that really create stress in your life, anxiety, you don't wanna do it, takes up too much time if it takes a whole day. Like, no, it's, it's not worth your time to do something like that. So outsource, outsource everything. Honestly, all of these things have impacted my life in like one way or another and ultimately just made me feel like I could be more present and enjoy the enjoy doing the things that I like actually enjoy doing rather than having to do stuff that I don't want to do. Obviously, there are sacrifices you have to make. I don't get to work with residents and fellows anymore and that makes me sad, but 
I can find other ways to achieve those things. I get to still go to conferences and connect with a lot of people, make YouTube videos like this and hopefully stay um, connected to the younger generation and keep me young. Uh, but yeah, it's just been like the pros for me outweigh the cons and I just hope that this encouraged you to at least look into other things, whether it's outsourcing something, maybe you feel like you're stuck in a job you don't need to feel stuck in. Like I couldn't even believe that I was leaving a job so soon after becoming an attending, but here we are. And now I feel like I'm in my forever job, right? So you never know where things are gonna go. I just hope that this video gave you a little bit of insight into how a lot of other working moms are making it work and they make it seem so easy and how are they doing it all, but you know, it's not easy. Everyone has their own struggle. Everyone is going through it. And I can assure you that nobody is doing it all. Everybody has help in some way or another. And if they don't, well, kudos to them. But I'm pretty sure that every working mom that I know has some form of help. And, you know, it just looks different for everybody. And you have to find the puzzle pieces that fit together for you. So if you like videos like this, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram at MD. I'm just getting back into making more videos. Um, and so I really want to create more and I want to do more. Obviously they will still be about radiology, but also maybe once in a while videos like this. If you like content like this, then please subscribe to my Substack where I'm going to be talking a lot more about just working mom life, radiology life, just at home stuff because I love talking about it, but it's not necessarily the best place on my YouTube channel. So yes, if you like it, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my Substack. And I have the link down in the description box below. And finally, if you've really made it to the end of the video, I wanted to highlight something that I've been loving this week, which I'll be doing every week, and it's going to be called my weekly highlight. So this week's highlight is a podcast called Best of Both Worlds. They have many, many more listeners than I have here on this channel, and probably than those who are watching this part of my video, but it might help you if you're a working parent. It's about working and life and putting it all together. It's run by two people. One is a physician, Sarah Hart Unger, and there is a writer, talk, like speaker, a talker, writer, speaker, leader, and her name is Laura Vanderkam. And I just think that their insight is really interesting because they have sort of different lives and different schedules, but they both, I mean, we all share the same struggles, right? So they talk about it every week, a different struggle, a different piece of parenting, and it's been very insightful for me. So hopefully you enjoy it as much as I do. And with that, finally, I would like to say thank you so much for returning to my channel, for viewing my channel, for subscribing again, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. You guys, I am re-recording this video because I thought it would be faster and I'm still at minute 25. So yeah, maybe not. I, I was wrong. I was completely wrong on that. I'm like getting really sidetracked this morning.